This evening, let's explore Yong Jie Xuan Jue's Song of Enlightenment. And then let's meditate. This is Lama Jigme Gyatso of the Buddha Joy Meditation School. Welcome to Meditate Like a Jedi, which is brought to you by the kind folks who support this channel on Patreon. This evening, we could chant and meditate and enjoy a lesson or two, but first, if you love Star Wars and you wish to meditate as transformatively as General Leia Organa upon Ajahn Kloss under the guidance of Luke, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. Good news. If at any point during this evening's live stream you have a specific question about Buddhist meditation or Buddhist philosophy or how to apply them to your life, simply type the question in the chat window on the right-hand side of the screen. And I'll be happy to answer your questions for you. Hmm, having some trouble with my side monitor, please bear with me. No bad fortune, no good fortune, no loss, no gain. Never such th never seek such things in the eternal serenity. So, you're probably much smarter than me. I was an idiot, and I thought <laughs> when I first began my journey on Buddha's path, I thought that it was like Aladdin's lamp. It was like a form of magic, and I could get whatever I want, whenever I wanted, for as long as I wanted. But it turns out that ain't right. <laughs> and when we uh, get... We will be very frustrated if we try to drag duality into the Buddha's path. There is a, a wonderful saying. It's trite but true. It is what it is. Our job is to seek liberation from the tyranny of the fundamental duality of um, dread and desire. Now, that doesn't mean those impulses will not still be there. We just seek liberation so that those impulses, those drives, no longer control our choices or our utterances or our deeds. Let's continue. For years the dusty mirror has gone unclean. Now let us polish it completely once and for all. Many believe that this is a reference to a passage from the Platform Sutra of the Sixth Chan Patriarch, whose name I have no idea how to pronounce. And I kind of pronounce it like Huey, New, Huey Lewis in the News. I mean, it's Hua Ying, and heaven help me, I'm, I can't pronounce it very well. But the idea is there was a dichotomy between those of the gradual path and those of the sudden path. Some people think, oh, is that the difference between Renzai and Soto? No, 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 no. This predates them by many, many, many centuries. Simply put, there was a time when the gradual path was codenamed for those who practiced, who believed 
that it was wise to be rigid, fearful, controlling, elitist, uh, competitive, and cruel. However, there was, there's always been a minority who belonged to the Southern Path, who suspected that it was much more advantageous to be flexible, loving, laid-back, egalitarian, cooperative, and kind. The first time I read a translation of the, the platform suit that I, I was blown away when I uh, read that when the rigid fundamentalist, well, everyone was given a, a question to test their spirituality. And the most popular candidate for the position of Abbott was basically said, you know, it was a two-part question. The first part was this. For years, the dusty mirror has gone unclean. And um, the, if memory serves correctly, his answer was, you know, we polish it every day in an effort to see clearly. And that was an inference to sure and steady wins the race. <laughs> However, a young upstart who basically his only exposure to the Dharma had been the Diamond Sutra, the Vajra Sutra, uh, was working in the kitchen. And his answer was basically, there is no mirror, there is no dust, and there is no one to dust it. The fifth patriarch said, that kid from the kitchen, he's your next abbot. And the people from the, the, the gradual path promptly lost their minds and decided to kill him. Hmm. Kill. The irony is 50% of the Eightfold Path pertains to loving kindness. No room for killing. And so, this is here basically to show us that this is one of several passages in the entirety of the Song of Enlightenment that pretty much draws a dichotomy between the gradual school and the sudden school. And now there's, we respond with the sudden thought, the sudden school's response. Who has no thought who is not born? If we are truly not born, we are not unborn either. Ask the wooden dummy of a seamstress if this is not so. How can we realize ourselves by virtuous deeds or by seeking the Buddha? So, it's easy to get stuck with an emptiness. Emptiness is a, is a tool, but if we're careful, it becomes a trap. That's why the South Indian philosopher Nagarjuna taught the two truths, the conventional and the ultimate, teaching they were both were important, equally important. What is conventional truth? Mindfulness. What is ultimate truth? Meditation. What is conventional truth? Noticing as we breathe in. What is ultimate truth? Relaxing as we breathe out. And so, just as it's important to recognize the emptiness of what we perceive, we must also recognize the emptiness of emptiness and not cling to one or the other, realizing we need both. The, the inference here is we are not to be, it will not serve us to be so rigid that we cannot think for ourselves. We don't want to be as mindless as a man made out of wood, like the wooden dummy of a seamstress. Now, so this is kind of challenging material. The last line, the last triplet reads, how can we realize ourselves, by virtuous deeds or by seeking the Buddha? And the answer is, it's a trick question, by neither. Not by seeking the Buddha, but by seeking what the Buddha sought. So, it's great to do the right thing if, we are, if, if our, it's flowing from love, not from spiritual greed or quasi-spiritual greed, 
But for, remember, the highest love is spontaneous and uncontrived. So we are wired to be kind, and meditation frees us from the tyranny of the fear center in the bottom of our brain, making it much easy, easier to practice the spontaneous kindness that really is our birthright. Seeking the Buddha makes us children. Children, as a survival trait, cling to their parents. Uh, that protects them, especially with mammals, that protects them often from predators. Once puberty hits, they, go, they move from devotion to parent, which is like sort of a vertical energy, literally a child looking up at the giant who is their parent, to the horizontal energy of love for their fellows. They move from dependence to cooperation. Huge, huge shift. Puberty is a profoundly transformative time. So our job is not to act like mewling infants who are treating the Buddha, real or imagined, like a god, but instead to follow his example. We take refuge um, in the Buddha's example and instructions and students. Let's turn our attention to tonight's practice text. The six syllable tantra of the great compassionate one. So, quick like a bunny, I'm going to hopefully access the right word feature. Giddy up. Uh, but, so I think it could be fun right now to do to knock out a couple bows. And I do this not out of superstition, but just out of pragmatism. It can be physically refreshing, you know, to knock the co cobwebs out, so to speak. Remembering, of course, that the Great Compassionate One is an archetype of enlightened compassion. I take refuge in the protector, chin raise again for the sake of the six types of mother transmigrators generate bodhicitta. So I think it could be wise to recite this three times.
I take refuge in the protector and raise again for the sake of the six times of mother transmigrators generate bodhicitta. I take refuge in the protector and raise again for the sake of the six times of mother transmigrators generate bodhicitta. Meditating on love, compassion, joy, and equanimity may all beings of all worlds. Thusly invoke the Archive Great Compassion and one on money but may So what is the di- what is the secret to transforming mindless mantra repetition into tra- powerful mantra meditation? The secret is twofold. Number one. During your exhalation, while you are chanting the mantra, physically relax as best you can. Number two, during the inhalation, silently and mentally recite something, either an intention or a rhetorical question that help us to develop, help us to train in either love or in letting go. This time we're training in love, Let me see if I can if I can squeeze this onto the page. All right. Umani me me um umani man me um umani man me um umani man me. We're, go- we're going to review the meaning of emptiness together. May I let go of all circumstances, bodies, communication, and minds, as if they were as not graspable as a vast empty void. Let's see here. Let's change this a little bit here. All right, take two. As we relax into our exhalation, we could release what we notice during our inhalation, as if they were as not graspable as a vast empty void. 
like the illusion of the infinite azure sky on a bright and beautiful cloudless moon, which, although tantalizing to the eye, could be not graspable to the hand. Now, let us perform our first of two silent meditations. This mindfulness and meditation are known by many names, including Zen Chan Jiana, Mahamudra Ati Yoga Dzogchen, and Treksho, or Slice Through. Despite the grandiosity of the name, the practice is fairly simple. First, let us notice this photograph of a Buddha statue. We can emulate it. Notice how the legs are not torturously t t uh, tangled in a full lotus position. The legs, the, sh the shins are just resting on top of each other, ha the hips having released. The hands comfortably rest in the lap with the edge of the hand pressing, again, pressing gently against the lower abdomen to aid with the energy flow. The shoulders are neither hunched forward nor pulled back. They have found the middle place or the, middle, the midpoint between both extremes. Upon the face dances the, a subtle Mona Lisa smile. Or I should say, upon the face, a subtle Mona Lisa smile dances upon the corners of the mouth, the apples of the cheeks, and the crow's feet of the eyes. And most importantly, there feels like there is traction between the head and the pelvis. As we breathe in, we silently and mentally recite the demonstrative pronoun, this. As we exhale, we silently and mentally recite the hyphenated verb, relaxing. The in-breath is shorter and sharper. The out-breath is longer and, sh and softer.
Let's chant. Magically manifesting from relaxing into the sphere of emptiness. A cloud of samantam bandara like infinite offerings appears, ceaselessly pervading the vast expanse of the whole universe. May all beings of all worlds thusly invoke the archetype, great compassionate one, O Mane Badmehu. O Mane Badmehu, O Mane Badmehu, O Mane Badmehu, O Mane Badmehu. While all phenomena are as not graspable as if they were a vast and deep void, all places could look as not graspable as Lord Celestial Mansion of Light of the Pure Land of the Potala Mountain. May all beings of all worlds thusly invoke the archetype, great compassion of one Omani Padmehu. So let us lovingly wish that all circumstances of all beings now be as fortunate as a Buddha's, a real or imagined Buddha's paradise. Om Mani Ban Me Hum Om Mani Ban Me Hum Om Mani Ban Me Hum Om Mani Ban Me Let us ponder how, as we breathe in, our circumstances could seem quite solid, independent, and permanent. And yet, as we relax into our exhalation, these exact same circumstances could feel as if they were as non-graspable as a Buddha's real or imagined paradise comprised only of light. Om Mani Ban Me Hum Om Mani Ban Me Hum Om Mani Ban Me Hum Om Mani Ban Me Hum. Okay, my friends, I appear to have hit my wall of vitality, so I'm going to have to cut this short. So let's just go back to the opening wish together I take refuge in the protector Chen raise again for the sake type of six times of mother transmigrators generate bodhicitta Generate, generating bodhicitta in this context means we wish to liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging If you feel that I have earned it, you could type something in the chat window. You could give this live stream a thumbs up. You could share it with a friend. You could even support this channel through Patreon. In approximately 11 hours, I look forward to returning to leading to lead tomorrow's early morning meditation. Until then, may you and yours be happy and healthy, and if you are as geeky as me, this is the way.